I am lost for words. I just stand here shaking. You are never. This morning on our second Cup Cafe, singer songwriter Alex Boyd. He has been performing since the age of seven and has already lived the dream. He's danced with Debbie Allen, sang with Patti LaBelle, even acted alongside Bruce Willis. And here to perform his new hit single, Light Up Tonight, from his upcoming CD, Commit Me, and making his television debut. Please welcome Alex Boyd. To stand here shaking, you are never gone. When I'm without you, you're a abandoned person. What's hey, up, man? How are you? How are you? I'm good. Good. Talk to me. All right. So we'll get right into it. Um, for the ones that aren't too familiar with you, who exactly is Alex Boyd? Um, well, I am a newly signed artist on Jive Records, and I just finished my debut album for them called Commit Me. Um, and the only song available out right now is called Light Up Tonight, uh, but we look for uh, a release date. Well, we're looking for a release date, rather, um, probably sometime in fall. So your single, Light Up Tonight, is available on iTunes right now. Uh, it you, is. Can you tell me a little bit about the track and what was the inspiration behind it? Um, I know it's so typical. Uh, a lot of songwriters write about heartbreak and, and breakups, and, you know, this is, this is no different. Um, I felt like I made a really big mistake in letting somebody go in my life, and um, it, I spent a long time trying to make it right. And part of making it right was writing the song. Um, so this is for someone very special. So, there's a shift in what's being considered pop, and like not to put you in a box, but would you consider yourself pop? Uh, yeah, I mean, I you know, everybody asks me how I define the songs and the music, and I, I can't give you a real. Um, I was going to say I can't give you a real accurate answer, but I'd say the most accurate answer is uh, it's truly a hybrid of, of some of the most popular music from many generations before us. So I think, yeah, definitely it's pop music. You know, I heard uh, Adele come on the radio after Akon the other day. I mean, if that doesn't tell you that things are changing, then like, yeah, you know. Yeah, right. I totally agree. You grew up in Northern Virginia and ended up attending Washington, D.C. to Ellington uh, School of the Arts. How is it being in a school with all these like talented musicians and people? I mean, it was it was incredible. I mean, I think uh, that could be the first place where I really started to feed my uh, soul music addiction, uh, just because I was introduced to so much of it there. Um, and you know, after that, I went to a school called Interlochen Arts Academy in uh, North Michigan, which was uh, it was a boarding school that had 400 students from 60 nations around the world. A lot of kids were. I mean, I'd say half of them were like English as a second language. Um, Amazing, prodigious talents, you know, 15 year old kids scoring 60 piece orchestras. And, uh, it was everything from dance to acting to creative writing to music, um, vocals, I don't know, I'm sure I'm leaving something out, uh, visual arts. But that, that was really mind blowing to see uh, such young people doing such big things there um, creatively. So clearly, you were very interested in the arts and music from a very young age. But at that time, did you know what kind of artist you wanted to be? Did you even know you wanted to be an artist? Um, you know what? Let me grab something special right here. Hold on. If I can find it. Yeah. I have this old playbill from the Kennedy Center. Um, if I remember the girl's name correctly, her, her name, this is Devin. They put her on the cover. Um, and if you flip, this is from a show I did called Dreams. So... In the playbill, after the actor's bio, it says what that actor's dream is. So I must have been 15, four, maybe 14 at the time. Hold on, i got to find this. All right. um, and, yep, yeah, here it is. And at the end of my bio, I can get it up close enough. This, this is it right here. Uh, there we go. It says Boyd's dream is to be a recording artist. So I think uh -huh. it was... You know, at that, around 14, 15, coming into to high school, I knew that I wanted to be a recording artist, whatever that meant to me at the time. Um, and uh, what is it, 12, 13 years later, it's happening, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I don't think I knew what kind of artist I wanted to be. I was inspired by a lot of the greats, you know, including Frank Sinatra and uh, Chet Baker and Nat King Cole, uh, Donny Hathaway, and, um, you know... I, I hope that that shows in the music that we made. 
<laughs> yeah. It definitely does. I see that. You were on a fame competition show in 2003 for mm -hmm. NBC, and the tagline was Fast Track to Fame. My name is Alex, and I'm from D.C. I'm 18, and I came to work. Uh, can you tell me more about that show and how it affected you or helped you? A Fast Track to Fame. Um, it was a great introduction to the very strange world of being famous, for sure. It's a very weird thing. Um, instantly overnight, there were fan sites popping up about me all over the, you know, all over the internet, and I stopped every day signing autographs everywhere I went. I was really young; I was just about to be 19. Um, and uh, like I said, it was an introduction. I think it was a good introduction. But you know, for people that really want to be um, an artist with some kind of uh, unique identity, I, I don't think the talent show route's the way to go. Um, you know, you're going to be boxed in and uh, made to be a, a cookie cutter artist, right, for lack of a better description. There haven't been a lot of artists that have broken out of it. I think uh, Carrie Underwood did a great job of that, coming away from American Idol. And, and now, when you mention her name, you don't really think American Idol. You just yeah. think, like, she's a dope singer, you know? Yeah, I so, would say maybe like three, maybe like Adam Lambert, mm -hmm. like Kelly Clarkson, and yeah. Carrie. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it was a cool experience. I got you know my TV legs, and then uh, and then I was thrown into the concrete jungle that is Los Angeles, and and had to figure out how to do it on my own. So you know at the time I didn't really know the mountain I had to climb. This was eight years ago almost, um, and I did a magazine interview where they asked the same question. And I said, well, I'd rather make it on my own accord than some bubblegum talent show. I think is what I called it. Um, but it's been the most rewarding experience of my life, and I, I certainly feel like I, I found myself. And I found a quote from you in TV Guide, and uh, this is what you said. I can't thank her enough for taking me on and show. And you were talking about uh, uh, Carney Wilson from Wilson Phillips, and, um, and you said, for shopping me to some labels. But finding the right deer can take a long time. And like you said, you were 19. So if you could today talk to your 19 self, what would you tell him? That's a really solid question. I'd say get ready to uh, have your dreams smashed over and over again and, and be prepared. Be prepared to get back up and try again because the only people that are failures and losers are the ones that stop trying. And uh, you know, if you really want to have a career in this business and make a life out of it, well then you need to be in it for the long haul and, and not for a, a quick shot at being famous. It has to be about the music. Absolutely. So since being in the business, what's the best advice that you've received? Oh gosh, I guess it would have been Radney Foster, who's a country writer, who wrote with my brother. My brother, uh, Chip Boyd, is a songwriter too. He just placed a song on uh, Martina McBride's new album that's oh, coming. Wow. And um, I was, this was before Interlochen, I was 16, 15 maybe. And we went to visit my brother when he was getting married. And my parents, eager to to help me find my path in this business, they went and asked him just what you said, what's your, you know, the best piece of advice you can give us. And, uh, and he said, no matter how famous you get, you're still going to be the one that makes you a star. And nobody else is going to do it for you. And it's, it's so true. So true. You got to be the one rowing your own boat. You know, that's it. You were working in LA and, and trying to do the circuit of LA, trying to get this deal or deals. Um, when did the Jive record come along and was that your first deal? It was my first major record deal. I'd had some uh, production deals, as they call them, um, along the way from different independent companies, um, trying different sounds, working with different you know, writers and producers and whatnot. Um, but Jive came along... I mean, it was 2010. I guess it was July of 2010. It's been almost a year. It's been almost exactly a year. You know, we'd interviewed with uh, a couple of other labels. Like, not a couple. We'd met everyone. Sorry. We shopped to every single label. And in the first wave, you know, first wave must have been six, seven different labels. We didn't really get any bites except from Universal Records. And uh, they were sweet. They were really good people. And we went to their office in New York and uh, had a great showcase and we left with the impression that we had a record deal. Um, and then nothing. Two, three months passed and we hear nothing. 
and you know, like I said earlier, be prepared to have your dreams smashed over and over again. Um, this was like the worst of them all because I felt like I'd finally achieved what I said I wanted to achieve in that playbill and just show you. And uh, we had to pick ourselves up and keep moving. So uh, I say we, I say my producer and I, my producer and Andy Rose and co-writer. We, he co-wrote all the songs uh, except for one on the record. Um, so I started promoting online and I started trying to get uh, music bloggers to write about us and write about Light Up Tonight and, you know, started honing my image and, you know, becoming the person you see right here. You know, it's, like I said, fame and, and celebrity is a weird thing. You have to be, you have to be the person that they see on, on the screen because if you're not, well, then you're constantly going to be juggling two lives and that's just impossible. So, you know, got the image together. I finally got some people, you know, got some people writing about it. And uh, one of my friends who's a stylist happened to see uh, one of my posts and really liked Light Up Tonight. And he happened to be styling Maxwell at the time and said, can I send this to his managers? Absolutely. So I meet his managers on a Tuesday. And the next Tuesday, we were in New York signing with Jive Records. I mean, it happened just like that. That's amazing. And then how far along was it until you... The CBS's early show. Well, I guess it was a year since signing with them. Um, Did you sleep the night before? Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I slept three hours, but not because I was nervous, but because we had to be at the studio at 4 a.m. to sound check. Oh, my God. It's so <laughs> early. You know, you know, I don't go to sleep till 1 a.m. usually. Mm -hmm. Every night, that's normal for me. <laughs> so, you know, passed out, slept a couple hours, showed up for sound check, and um, did our thing. I really like your song, Commit Me. The only version I heard of it was from the uh, the Plaza Hotel performance, <laughs> but uh, I feel like it's very it's a harder sound than Light Up Tonight, um, but I feel like it's a big emotional crescendo throughout the song. Um, can you tell me about that song? It was the first one we'd written uh, after signing the deal with Jive, and a couple of people in interviews had asked me, you know, commit me. That sounds like a negative thing, like uh, you're going nuts. And I'm like, well, we were going nuts, but we were going nuts because everything was going right for once. You know, it's like you, you, you try and make it in this business and it just doesn't happen overnight. And, um, and so, you know, after years and years and years of things just not working out, well, this worked out. And suddenly we got this some beautiful record deal from Jive. They've been, they've been so good to us and, and, and just, you know, let us be the artist that we are. Let me be the artist that I am. Um, and let us present the music that we, you know, created before we signed with them, which is uh, that's brave on their part to sign an act with, uh, you know, no real track record and just let them run and make the, own, you know, the, their own album. Um, I'm sorry, the commitment, right? Um, so, so yeah, we just felt like this is this is nuts. You know, it's hard to believe that everything is actually happening. You know, like uh, like a scene in a dream. There's another song called uh, Snap. And there's one part in it that I love, and it's just the, the beginning, and you just hum that one note. Uh, I love that part. Thanks. Uh, Thanks so much. Um, so, what are some of the artists that you'd like to work with in the future? Definitely want to do a duet with Adele. Oh, my yeah, favorite. she's the best. I she's the. Best. I'd love to work with Music Soul Child. Um, if if Amy starts to work again, it'd be cool to work with Amy Winehouse. You know. So we can expect Commit Me in the fall. Uh, can mm -hmm. you tell people where they can read more about you and stay up to date on everything Alex Boyd? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Facebook.com slash Alex Boyd Official. Uh, my Twitter, my MySpace, and my YouTube is all Alex Boyd Music. Um, and then, of course, just you know, Google my name and, and the title track, Light Up Tonight. You'll find uh, all kinds of stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me, Alex. Uh, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, dude. Talk to you later, right. man. Talk to you later. Peace.